Kia ora tato te whanau. Ko Takatimu te pai moanga. Ko Orite te awa. Ko Irene te iwi. No Otapiri, Winton, aho. Ko Deborah Crow, aho. Kia ora tato. I'd first like to acknowledge those of you who are deep lis nature listeners in the room, including our iwi, and in particular those that hosted and guided us over the last few days. I'd now like to invite you to take a minute, you might like to close your eyes, and call to mind a really special spot in nature. And I invite you to just notice the visual surrounds, all the elements that are there, the colours and the shapes. Notice the sounds. Might be birds, cicadas at this time of year. Might be the wind in the trees or the gentle bubbling of the creek. And now I invite you to also consider the sensations that are there. Maybe it's the sun on your back that gentle breeze across your hand, or the feel of the earth beneath your feet. And while you're having that sensory experience, I'll share some of my story, which started on a farm in Southland. And then as an engineering student, I learnt to kayak. And after that, any of my free time was spent exploring the wilderness of New Zealand. It seemed quite natural that when it came time to do my OE, I would go to the Western United States and spend it kayaking, biking, skiing, horse riding, mostly in the company of a very cheeky Southern Colorado kayaking cowboy. <laughs> About a year later, he introduced me to a man called John Milton in The Way of Nature. A month or two later, heartbroken, I found myself running back to John to attend one of his nature retreats. This involved seven days camping on my own at the base of those Colorado mountains. It's fair to say that that experience was a lot more than I was anticipating. The ponderosa pine literally held me as I cried. The termites were my entertainment. And I can still see that look of love in the eye of the deer that graced my sight. I learned more about the flow of life from that lovely little creek than I had kayaking any river. But I learnt something much deeper. I realised that my love affair with nature was one way. Nature gave and I took. John also introduced me to the work of Paul Hawken, who had just released a book called The Ecology of Commerce. It was through this that I realised that business can be a positive impact for change and that this was my path. I returned to New Zealand, and over 20 years later, I've co-founded and exited a technology company, and I'm still involved in technology startups, both here and in New Zealand. However, my focus is shifting now to organisations and environmental impact. I've noticed in conversations, though, that often the motivation for impact is fear, perhaps guilt, Sometimes it's even greed. Now, it's not so much the motivation I'm concerned about, but it's the fact that those motivations are not enduring. As soon as the fear or the guilt subsides, or the money goes away, we move on too. However, love is an enduring motivation. I know that as a daughter, a wife, a mother, and a friend, the links I will go to to care for and protect those that I love. And those, that love is based on an intimate knowledge that's specific to the needs of those unique people. The same goes with nature, okay? It's made up of specific and individual beings, each with their own needs. And it's up to us to learn what they are. And we can all have a deep connection with the land and all that is within it. 
It is a privilege, it is a responsibility, and it is an absolute necessity to include nature as a stakeholder. This is not a new concept, as many of our iwi friends know. And over the next few days, you are going to hear examples that show you the benefits to business when all stakeholders are included. So I invite you to take responsibility to intimately know all those beings and the aspects of the environment that your work impacts. I ask you to ask, to listen to their needs and to include that information in your planning and decision making. And if you need help, <coughs> reach out. I stand here before you as one of many in the spirit of nature. And we're here to help and to connect you to the most wonderful network. Kia ora. <laughs>